Powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, it's Football at Four. Football at Four, Friday edition, Labor Day weekend. Josh Hedick filling in for Mike Gill on 97.3 ESPN. It's been a busy week for the Eagles. I mean, you've had trades, you've had waivers, you've had guys put on the practice squad. You have four quarterbacks in the building, for goodness sake. So we're getting all that more to recap a wild week for the Eagles as we went from the initial 53-man, as Adam Kaplan and Jeff Mosher like to say on the Inside the Birds podcast. Well, now we got uh, version six of the roster on Friday. Adam, how you doing today? I am good, my friend. Good to be with you on this what I would call an interesting week, yes. It definitely has been a uh, lot of action. No, things have considerably slowed down uh, today and yesterday, but certainly a lot has happened around the NFL and with the Eagles. Well, speaking of yesterday, the Eagles claimed a running back, Trey Sermon. Uh, for some people, he may be most famous for having 300-plus rushing yards against Northwestern when he was at Ohio State. But uh, to me, I think there's a lot of reasons – for me, why I understand why they did it. So, Adam, from what you understand, why did the Eagles claim Trey Sermon off waivers? Yeah, look, this is a guy that they had a fairly high grade on. Uh, this is a guy that doesn't cost them anything. It's just a waiver claim. They didn't have to sign him. Now, they do inherit his contract, but they didn't have to give up anything for him. He's only in the second year of a four-year deal. He's got good, it's, you know, he's got good backup money, but the fact of the matter is this is a guy who did very well in the senior ball. Uh, who opened the season as the starter last year with the Niners. Now, he didn't have a great training camp, uh, to, to, be, to be sure. What happened is Elijah Mitchell uh, got hurt, and Mitchell did not play uh, in week one. And Sermon was a guy that sort of underachieved for them, and they addressed the position again in the third round with Ty Davis Price. And he just didn't, he didn't have a great training camp, very average, I'm told, this summer. But the reason why the Eagles wanted him, the big reason is because he's got size. This is something we had outlined on Inside the Birds, two things to start training camp. They were going to do something at safety, and they're going to do something at running back by the start of the season, and they did both. And this kind of, Josh, I mean, if you looked at it, there's really nothing else. I mean, you just got to go with this roster. They hit up two holes, one major one at safety, which we certainly could get into if you'd like, and then the, the, the one at running back. Well, now, Sermon, will see how long he could hang here, but he fills that size role, no doubt. You mentioned the size role. I had a lot of people asking me yesterday, Adam, where's Jordan Howard? Why didn't they bring back Jordan Howard? And my simple answer, Adam, is I think the Eagles want to get younger. They're not trying to win just now. I think they're trying to prepare for the long term. I think that's part of the reason why Sermon's here. Well, the problem with Jordan Howard is very simple. This one's easy to figure out. He's had too many injuries with that with uh, the stinger in the neck, and they were not willing to go in that direction. That's what I'm told. So... Um, they wanted to go in a different direction, though they like Jordan Howard. Certainly did a great job in that role, uh, no doubt. Uh, when they got him from the Bears, uh, it, it, it just turned out to be as they keep bringing him back. And boy, went healthy. He did such a great job. And he kind of. Re- Jordan Howard, by the way, was the guy who had to revive his career. Uh, the, the Bears didn't want him anymore. He struggled with them in his final year there, and uh, he certainly revived his career with the Eagles. Now, they claimed Trey Sermon, and they got other running backs on the practice squad, LaMichael P. Ryan and Kennedy Brooks. So this is a team that seems to, you know, at least, shall I say, value having multiple options just in case. In terms of Sermon, you mean? You bring him in here? Well, Sermon, but also they got the two running backs on the practice squad. Yeah, yeah. Well, Kennedy Brooks has, has been here, and he just doesn't run very well. He's sort of a, sort of a you know, power back. He does have size, but... Uh, we, we we told people weeks ago there was no chance he'd make the team. Well, he's really not good enough. And the big one is uh, LaMichael Piran, his cousin of Samaje Piran. Yeah, that one, boy, Piran, LaMichael, Josh, never did anything for the Jets. He, right. at the University of Florida, just, it just didn't work. I, I'm surprised. Uh, he, he was given chance after chance by Joe Douglas, who drafted him with the Jets, but it didn't work. Uh, look, this is another draft pick. You know, that's the thing. These other, another... Mid-round pick who's going to get another chance to revive his career with, with uh, another team. This one, it has to be with the Eagles. So at least you like that these guys were highly touted coming out of college, and yes, they've underachieved. But that's the good thing, and he has size. They, they, they kind of OD'd on the size thing. We, we, we didn't see this is a little strong for us, but uh, they've addressed it. You can't say they didn't address it. Now we'll see what happens. 
uh, with with Sermon. Now, also, we should mention uh, Miles Sanders started working back yesterday. He'll be ready for week one uh, with the hamstring barring setback. But the question is, because Sanders has been out for three weeks or more, how much work can he handle week one against the Lions? We mentioned the practice squad. A lot of familiar faces from training camp there. Reed Sinet, Britton Covey, Devin Allen, Deion Kane, Noah Togiai, LaRaven Clark, a lot of guys who are on that practice squad who were with them already in camp. Yeah, this is interesting. So we had projected, let's see, the, um, the only ones we didn't think that were, let me see, I'm just looking at uh, our show from last week. We, we projected 12 of these guys. We didn't know that Cameron Tom, or some people call Tom Cameron, <laughs> would be on the, on the practice squad. Matt Leo doesn't count because he's, the, he's the, the exception. Uh, no, look, we um, no. Of course, we weren't sure about Sashray whether he'd make the team or not. No, the big one. I got to give the Eagles credit to get Anthony Harris, who they they cut to to their practice squad. That that's a great job by them. Now it's good for him to be willing to do it after they cut him. That that's a heck of a practice squad addition. I, I like that one. Uh, Reed Sinet, um We I want to talk about Ian Book, uh, Josh, before we get out of here. But Reed Sinet. Yeah. Uh, Reed Sinan is a guy that, look, he got off to a great start. He did well for two weeks and then completely fell off. But for the Eagles, they, they still want to try to develop him. He showed enough where he, he, gives you a, he gives you something on the practice squad. So I like that. And then De- Devin Allen, of course, no one's going to claim him. Britton Covey has a very good chance to be added from the practice squad to the 53 next Saturday, when, when, which is the deadline for the Lions game. That's at 4 p.m. Eastern. I would, I would, I believe that'll have a good chance to happen. They need to get through practice this week, but that's a that's a good chance to happen. Deion Kane had a very good preseason and training camp, but we the reason why we said he won't be on the team is they don't need to keep six receivers. Well, heck, they're not even keeping five now. That they traded Jalen Rager. Right. They did technically keep five, but they just traded him. And uh, Christian Ellis. I know we don't talk about Luther Ellis' son very much, but he's super athletic, and the Eagles like him. He was he missed all of training camp due to an injury. But they want to look, take a look at him. And let me give you one more little sleeper here. Mario Goodrich, over the, he was one of the better young quarterbacks in training camp over the final two weeks. And he pushed for a roster spot. He did clear waivers. They did sign to the practice squad. And then the other one is Davion Taylor. Davion Taylor signed yesterday, signed his contract. Here's a guy that completely was a miss as a third-round pick. And he did enough with them to at least get another look and this is a good spot for him, Josh, because there was no way he would ever play if he had he been on the 53. I mean, he was always going to be a bit of a development guy, right? Like, he, he was someone who, yep. he, barely, he barely almost played no high school football because of his mom's religious beliefs. And then he got to Colorado, and he was super green. So wasn't he always a, a project guy anyway, Davion Taylor? Yes, and that this is where the practice squad is so integral into his development. If he's ever going to make it, Develop him at a slower pace. The Eagles are so deep. I know it's kind of funny for me to say. I don't think I – fifth year of Inside the Birds, I've never said – I promise you, I've never said the Eagles have a deep linebacker group. Well, they do, and they do not need Davion Taylor at all. They're, in fact, look, there are going to be some guys, you know, who don't play a lot, like N'Kobe Dean. Um, he's a backup. Now, we'll have to see how much he plays. Obviously, he'll dress, but will he play 20 snaps, 15, 30? We don't know. They'll have to figure that out. But he's not even going to have the role we thought because T.J. Edwards beat him out for the for a starting inside linebacker job in their 34 front. NFL insider Adam Kaplan joining us for Friday's edition of Football at Four. Of course, powered by the Inside the Birds podcast, InsideTheBirds.com. You mentioned Jalen Rager. We got to get to him, Adam, because, you know, you and Jeff had talked about for a while the possibility of Rager being traded well, he didn't just get traded. He got traded to the Vikings. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard to believe, Josh. It's just it's J.J. Artega Whiteside ends up to the, you know, the team with, with Metcalf, though he's on the practice squad. Now, the reason why I wanted to finish this talk off, because I want to talk about how it impacts the team. We, everybody knows what happened. We don't need to rehash the trade and all that. That's behind us. But we, we need to talk about going forward what this looks like. So yeah. the first thing is, now, obviously, this created an open spot for a receiver because you can't really go into a game or every week dressing just four receivers. That's risky. That's why I said a couple minutes ago that Covey figures to be signed or, or elevated. Every team gets three practice squad elevations. I mean, three elevations per player. So now the Eagles, it, there's a little bit of, of roster gymnastics because another thing is Andre Dillard got hurt earlier this week. He figures to go on IR, short-term IR. 
So that one, the Eagles have a choice. Do they replace him with Covey, who could be the permanent punt returner, or do they use LaRaven Clark for that, or just elevate Clark? That's a little bit of a challenge for the, the personnel staff, which will, over the next week, they could, they could decide that there's no rush. Again, they have till next Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern to make that decision. Uh, but as far, far as, uh, yeah, the, the receiver position now without Rager, you don't have him as the fifth receiver. Had he been on the team, he was going to be the fifth. You know what it looks like. Zach Pascal is their fourth receiver. And if Covey's at it, he'll, he'll be a backup slot. That's really all he can play. I know they, they, they like their receiver staff versatility, but that's really all he can do. Now, here's the funny thing about Covey, which I don't think people realize. He, he did very well in training camp. He just didn't get opportunities in the games. So a lot, some people didn't have him on their 53. You're not basing it on the reality of the fact that he, he was good enough to make it, but because he did not have practice, he, clubs don't get an opportunity to see his practice tape unless it was the Dolphins or the Browns who they practiced against, but there's no game, good game tape. So the Eagles thought, and they were right, that they could sneak him through waivers and he wouldn't be claimed, and they were correct about that. As a matter of fact, the only one, Josh, that I thought was a mistake was Jack Anderson being cut, and he got claimed, I think, by the Giants. Uh, Brandon Brown is there, the, who's a former Eagles personnel guy who's now a assistant GM for the Giants, so he obviously knows him. And they, that's a valuable guy to have because his ability to play center and also to play guard. He's not really a tackle, but he has value, and that was a little bit of a surprise that they cut him. When you think about the way this team is going to be moving forward, Adam, because you mentioned, you know, hey, Dillard has – the injury, the Raven Clark can move up. They trade Rager. They got three wide receivers on the practice squad. You know, how much of this is, you know, just Howie Roseman thinking a step ahead constantly? In ter- what do you mean by that in terms of when you talk about three receivers there? Well, just like the big picture, like the Eagles are keeping the big picture in mind with the practice squad using that, you know, for these different things. Yeah, so Covey we talked about. Now, okay, this, I'm glad you brought this up because we didn't really talk about Devin Allen. Devin Allen was, absolutely should not have been on the roster. I mean, I, I know people went crazy with a big touchdown catch. I mean, he's a, he's a major developmental player. He hasn't played meaningful football in six years, okay? Let, let's be real here. He has to learn how to play football at this level. He is absolutely perfect for a practice squad. He has no business being on a 53-man roster. Now, Deion Kane earn a roster spot, but the Eagles just felt like because he's vested, they could just cut him. That way he's not subject to waivers. That's why they did it that way. And, yeah, you're right. They got him back, Josh, and this gives you tremendous flexibility. Kane is really more of an outside receiver, so if they needed to bring him up, they can if someone got hurt. Covey is a backup slot punt returner who could do kicks. He's better as a punt returner. And Devin Allen, Josh, is clearly just a kickoff returner, He's not ready to play receiver at this level. I'm fascinated now you brought this up. Would there be a game where they would call Devin Allen up and use one, use one of those three uh, elevations because he's so fast in a straight line? I do wonder if there's a future for him sometime this season as their kickoff returner. Hey, I think there are a lot of Eagle fans who love that idea, Adam, just because you know how Eagle fans are. They <laughs> fall in yeah. love with guys, and I think a lot of Eagle yeah. fans fell in love with him. Yeah, you know, it's, look, it's a cool story. He's a track star, but track guys, strictly track guys, I know he did play football at Oregon. It takes him a while, and plus he's, he's much older. Uh, it, it's interesting because their, their special teams returns were so bad, and, and Rager did not do as well, obviously. Other than his rookie season when he, when he had the return for a touchdown, he was such a major disappointment as a returner. It kind of set them back. You know, his failure completely destroyed their return game in terms of, the, of, of having someone settled. They don't have, it's still really not settled. I, if I had to guess, it would be Quez Watkins as a kick returner. I don't know that it's settled yet, but he looked like the best guy in camp. So that, that's it. I know fans are really pissed off about their return game. I, I, just looking at our message boards on Inside the Birds on, on – uh, on Facebook, I know it bothers people, and I, I, I get it. I'm with you. They've got to get the special teams returns down. That, that's been a, obviously a problem for, for the last year or so. Adam, before I let you go, i got to ask you, Ian Book, he is now in the Eagles roster, Reed Sinet on the practice squad. What's the Eagles' plans here? Yeah, we have some great stuff with, on Ian Book. I know he was a fourth-rounder, but he had grades from five to, from, from uh, rounds five through seven from around the league. And I, 
that was kind of a reach. You don't take a guy in the fourth round who you see as a third-string quarterback. That was a mistake by it. The Saints completely misgraded him. We have some great stuff for a Monday show on him, on Ian Book, but I'll tell you this. Uh, he does give them a little bit of a different look because he's athletic. I know he's not the biggest guy in the world, but he gives them a different look for their scout team, and they call the look team. Uh, certainly it's a third-string quarterback. But don't forget now, he's got this year and two more years on his contract. Gardner Minshew's contract is up after the season. Mm. Something to keep in mind. You mentioned Inside the Birds dropping this Monday. So Labor Day, when everyone is driving home from the shore or going to the beach, they can download the Inside the Birds podcast. Adam Kaplan, Jeff Mosher, that will be dropping on Monday. And you guys got a lot of stuff going on as well over at InsideTheBirds.com. Uh, Adam, before I let you go, uh, do you guys have an idea yet on what the new lineup is going to be for the football Yes, we do. Uh, we, we are actually putting a – okay, I'll give you a little nugget here. We're going to put, a, put out a press release middle of next week, and that's in our fall lineup. I'm going to give you another nugget. We're going to, um, we're going to go back to – because people are like, keep asking us, when are you going to do three shows again? Well, we're doing it. We're doing one Monday, you know, that show. Yep. We're going to do one because we're only previewing this coming week. We're not reviewing the game. We're going to go over my training camp tour where I go camp to camp to camp. Plus, if you have fantasy drafts like me, I just did three this week, and I've got two next week. Uh, I'll give you nuggets per every camp that I got. We're going to drop that on Tuesday or Wednesday, and then we'll preview the Lions game Friday morning. So, yeah, you're going to get that. I will announce our pregame show lineup. We're going to now, we were working on a postgame thing. We're, we're, it's all fluid because – you have to sign, you know, we, we have to sign these contracts, but we're going to make some big announcements next week. And by the way, we also appreciate the thought of the inquiry right up on us, which we weren't aware of, but we appreciate it that they did this. It's pretty cool. We're part of their, um, their, their 45 best uh, podcasts in the Philadelphia region. It doesn't have to be sports. It could be in anything. So it's really cool that they did that. And then we got a very cool guest coming up. We got, again, we got a bunch planned, Josh, we can't announce yet. We got a super cool, super fan eagle who's a major celebrity everybody will remember. Well, you got me excited, Adam. I can't wait to see you all about it next week. Inside the Birds, the podcast. Like, subscribe, download. Give it that five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. At Kaplan NFL on Twitter for all your Eagles NFL coverage. And, of course, InsideTheBirds.com. Adam, great stuff today. You got it, Josh. Thank you.